to the DIY Animation Show, where we get to the heart of what it means to be an independent animator. I'm Lauren Morse. And I'm Jessica Dahl. Together with our guests, we'll explore tips, tricks, the psychological, the fundamental, and above all, how to make whatever you can with whatever you've got. From the keys to the breakdowns and everything in between. The timing's right to do it yourself. Let's get rolling. Everybody to the DIY animation show. Woohoo! Oh my goodness, yeah. hello! We are so excited to be here because today we have an interview with Alex and Lindsay Small Butera. Yeah, yeah. Amazing! For many of you, we're sure Lindsay and Alex need no introduction. Being the creators of YouTube sensation Batman Piderman, if you haven't seen it yet, it will change your life. It's true. On top of that, they've both directed and guest animated on not just one but two shows on Cartoon Network. Today, in part one, we cover the origins of Batman Piderman. How nonsensical humor and established rules go hand in hand. Working with Mondo Media. Making the kinds of shows you want to see more of. And making the internet a more loving place. Aw, yay! Yeah. Woo. The wait is finally over. Uh, it's so excited! Woohoo! Yeah. Can I ask what you guys are working on? Uh, currently, we're working on Batman Piderman Man again because um, we just finished up some stuff for. Uh, we finished up Adventure Time, SpongeBob, and finally we can go back to Batman Piderman, Man. Which Holy is good. Holy. We knew about Adventure Time, but I didn't know about uh, SpongeBob. Dude, dudes, congrats. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the SpongeBob thing just went up. Let me actually grab a link. It was yeah. for their anniversary thing. We just made a vine for them. Oh, that's so cool. It was fun. I got to style him, and it was fun. Mm, man, that's um, amazing. Oh, here it is. There. I can see, like, the little thumbnail right now, and it's already, like, super pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> we had fun working on it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he squeezes out jellyfish from his sponge hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I love that. I love how you did the composition too. Like it's really like it's really dynamic. Uh, this is really great. It was interesting designing for like a, a square <laughs> rather than like, you know, a traditional format. So it was fun. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. I feel like it's appropriate for SpongeBob too. It's just like squares everywhere, but not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is adorable. And actually we're I have the SpongeBob GIF open here too, just because I sent it to you and I just noticed that uh, one of the buns disappears for a frame and I just said a, a slight F word under my breath to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's always that one tiny thing, like, after you finish up an animation, and you're like, yeah, everything's accounted for, it's all good, and then it's posted, and you're like, wait, what's up? No! Oh, that, ha that happens all the time. It happened with Adventure Time. I was I was dying when we were watching it on TV because I was noticing small errors, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It kind of ends up being one of the charms of animation that... Well, I don't know if it's a charm necessarily, but you'll see it. 99% mm -hmm. of other people will be like, I didn't even notice. No, none of them do. It's like, oh. So it's just me sitting here getting angrier and angrier. <laughs> just slowly yeah. shaking your head, just, no. It doesn't help that the vine oh. keeps looping. I'm going to stop it because I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it just becomes more apparent every time it comes around. <laughs> it's basically not there for the entire animation. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> No, it's all good. It's kind of, you can laugh about it later and be like, oh, it's one of those Easter eggs that people put in on purpose. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It, I, I remember I had a professor uh, talking to me one time about his um, his senior film in school and uh, he was really proud of it and all that stuff. But for like a solid like two or three seconds in one of his scenes, the background just fully disappeared <laughs> and like, no. like fully. And a girl walked up to him and she's like, that was such a creative decision. I thought that was brilliant. And he was like, yes, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and just sort of a, <laughs> went out his way. You got to own it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like that was totally intentional. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex and Lindsay, 
we have a very, very important question for you both. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just get ready. But which Batman Spider Man character do you each identify most closely with? Super oh, serious God. question. Super <laughs> serious. Oh my God. <laughs> That's tough. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. It's hard because we we're in charge of all the characters. I feel like they're all me. All of them are different facets. Yeah, <laughs> like we're putting a little bit of each other into all of them. Oh, so definitely. it's very pumpkin acts like diffused. Me, pumpkin is like directly referenced from the way I physically behave. I feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you're a, you're a Batman guy. Didn't we decide that you were Batman and I would be Spider Man? Yeah, if we had to pick, but yeah. like it's not something we really think about. It's because other people ask usually. Yeah. <laughs> Their birthdays on, like, they have Facebook pages for themselves, and Spider Man's birthday is my birthday, and Batman's birthday is your birthday. So, mm -hmm. oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, no, that's absolutely wonderful. I just like the idea, too, of, um, like, Lindsay, if you're pumpkin, then Alex, maybe you're everybody else. So, is it just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'd say, I guess, if directly basing it, Wanda is more directly based on, like, the way I kind of behave. Yeah. I think so. What do you, for, and for you, you're definitely, I, I would still call you a Batman. You're definitely sure. a Batman. <laughs> I'll take you're it. You're just like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. So Batman Spider-Man is, I think, what you would call an internet sensation. It's just <laughs> incredible. It's so funny and it's so charming. Could you tell us how it came to be? Oh, boy. Um... So back when Alex and I were both in school where we met in college together at Massachusetts College of Art. Um, so we had a school assignment one day um, where we had to go see a, uh, an avant-garde play. And you want to kind of take it from here? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was for character animation. And we had to use props from the play to um, make an animated piece. And it had to be characters that you'd already drawn somewhere in a sketchbook. And... We had a sketchbook that we passed back and forth when we were living apart. We were about like an hour away. Yeah. Um, and I had worked at a, I was working at a comic shop at the time. I worked at a comic shop for six years. So we were often doing uh, comic book jokes to each other back and forth in the book. Aww. Yeah. And um, there was like a there was like a fat, dumpy looking Wolverine, Wolverine. and a fat, yeah. dumpy Spider-Man. And um, we just both hated the play at the uh, ICA so much <laughs> that I was like, I'm just going to use these characters because this is a stupid assignment. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of came out of, like, uh, I hate this assignment. Yeah. And you had to use three props from the play. So it was the phone, the sandwich, and the bed. Yep. And Alex made the first episode all by himself for that class. And then um, after that, we, we were graduating and kind of working in the field. Um, when Mondo Media contacted us and were like, please make more to Alex. So, Alex, you made, like, three episodes and then you gave up. I think it was, t I think <laughs> it was, was it two. two. I think I made two episodes by and then yourself. I was like, oh, I'm out of ideas completely. <laughs> I can't make any more episodes. And so then Alex came to me because I'm a writer as well as an animator. And he was like, can you, you know, do the show with me? And I said, no. Um, <laughs> but then later, after this bribery, I said, yes. Bribery being good food, sandwiches, things like that. Um, and so from then on, I've been writing it and animating it with Alex and helping. You can s sort of see it progress from the first initial one into something entirely different when I got my my claws into it yeah <laughs> Lindsay's tried to make it a smooth transition over time it's kind of fun like watching cool. it in succession now like if you actually watch them one after another it's sort of a it's a nice gradual kind of ease into whatever it's become mm -hmm. <laughs> that's our thing that's amazing it seems like it was such like a fast roller coaster in terms of like hey we made episode hey we made another episode hey hi mondo media how's it going <laughs> sort of <laughs> did that come as a shock to you at all or oh uh, just back at the time we hadn't we were both just kind of working um pretty typical entry-level jobs like alex was working over at soup to nuts on mm -hmm. word girl yep. and, and i actually was working at nike as a designer so I also have an illustration degree, so I do a lot of design work. And we kind of got that call, and we just kind of were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they were really casual about it. It was a, it was like an easy conversation. We're like, hey, yeah. we'll give you a little bit of money if you put it on our channel. And we were like, okay, cool. And it was very casual and And easy. we loved, we loved making it just for fun. Like, we would work all day at our jobs and come home and work on Batman Spider Man all night just kind of for funsies, um, which is what Batman Spider Man's always been. It's always been a side project for fun. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. I think you can really feel that too. Like Batman Spider Man, it's just it's so easygoing and it's just like it feels like like lighthearted and it's just 
I don't know. It just like it, like it literally feels like you guys had fun with everything that you were doing in there. It just feels really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of like the vibe I'm going for with it. I want I want it to be kind of joyful. And I feel like we're joyful when we work on it. And we have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely feel like you communicate that joy. Oh, good. Because it's just so lovely to watch. I could watch it all day, every day. It's <laughs> just wonderful. <laughs> I can't over here. My head's growing exponentially every time you <laughs> praise me. <laughs> <laughs> funny (laughs) the animation style itself you know it's such a simple visual style but then you've also got that like super crazy really elastic and kind of uh gloopy physics of the animation as well was that kind of born out of the fact you felt it was just a silly assignment yeah it was it was it started with um the assignment being silly and then the drawing the spirit of the drawings is like is like mocking superheroes (laughs) superheroes <laughs> so it was just like uh I, I can't remember exactly what i was thinking when i the first made, made the first one but it was sort of just like it was like i don't care Alex. i feel yeah. like watching the first one is like a peek into your psyche <laughs> 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 but it's actually great because the first two that you set up by yourself before i came in to uh work on it was you set up all these toys like you know different like small characters and i was able to like kind of be like, okay, these are the toys I have to work with and I can put them out on my game board. And it kind of like, I I feel like that's where the magic of the show actually stems from is like kind of like having these weird tools that the first one doesn't make any sense. It's very, you know, avant-garde and and making it contextual to itself was like a huge challenge and really fun and amusing. And I think that's where sort of the 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 joy and the pleasure and it comes from yeah 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 <laughs> how did like speaking of that because it's just again like it's so silly and fun and again like it feels like you guys are playing with toys like what just watching it you're like you can definitely feel that energy but the just one of the great things about the show is that even with it being that silly and that fun especially as as it progresses Lindsay when you're talking about context and uh, and just making sure that everything is contextual with each other. Can you elaborate on that a little bit sure, more? Sure. Um, so something I don't really like is um, just personally, it's sort of like the, I guess on the internet, they call it lol random humor, um, which can be amusing. But I feel like in order to make really good kind of whimsical style of humor that's very out there, it needs to be contextual, at least to itself. And that's why when it remains funny, because you're just saying random things or like, you know, showing random images, you kind of lose the humor of it after a while. Um, but since the whole show is sort of like, it's, it's a very strange world, but it makes sense within the world it's in. So it has context to itself. Um, like everything remains how it needs to be within the world. Like we have that, um, weird ongoing plot lines and stuff that all relates back to itself, keeping it sort of like sensical in its own weird way like it makes sense within the context of its own self if that makes any sense (laughs) no it it does kind of like um like the just the impression is that it's nonsensical but you just you delve a little bit deeper and it's like oh actually yeah I I wanted it to make sense within what it was like you you can follow the plot line you can follow it it does make sense just nonsensically (laughs) (laughs) yeah you can you can make whatever rules you want but um, if you don't stick to the rules you make, then you'll lose everyone yeah, who's watching. We definitely have a set of rules that I've kind of put in place for it. Like sometimes when we, we spin jokes together often when we're when I'm writing it, um, but like I'll be like, oh, no, no, that's too far. And you'll be like, how do you even know that? I'm like I know where the line is. There's a, yeah, there's a distinct line. I don't know where the line is. <laughs> He does. <laughs> I mean, like, is, is there a way that you sort of, is that just something that you intuitively, like, get a feeling for, whether you're writing it or uh, or animating it for that matter? Is that something that you intuitively have a grasp for over time when you're working on the show in terms of where that line is, like whether you're writing for it or animating for it? Or is that something that you are very, very purposeful about, like, oh, no, no, it has to be this rule for this reason and then kind of going on from there? Uh, it's intuitive at this point just because I, I think we've been working on it for about seven years together. Is it that long? Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's about, about seven years and off and on. Like, there'll mm-hmm. be big gaps between episodes sometimes. Yeah, um, particularly this last time between when the, it ended before and when the Kickstarter happened, there was a large gap. Yeah, it started about like seven or so yeah. years ago. So it's, it's sort of been in our wheelhouse for so long that I think at this point we kind of intuitively know the characters and know the world and we know each other so well because we work together all the time uh, and we're married. I guess that helps. <laughs> I think part of it comes from like we'll be working on an episode and, and then we'll, we'll be like, wouldn't it be funny if they did this? And then once we make that decision, 
that becomes a rule? Mm-hmm. I guess what I would say is because there's so many established rules already within the show that like I know where to take it, where mm-hmm. we're too far and where it's not far enough. There's like a sweet spot that makes Bam and Pyro Man kind of charming and funny um, without going too far in one direction or the other. Like, if that makes sense. Mm. It's weird talking about it out loud. I'm used to being alone, like typing like a like an ad. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. No, I, like it all sounds great though, and it's really interesting to hear too. <laughs> Well, I suppose stemming from how you kind of instinctively know where to take it and and where not to take it, and given that you've built up such a loyal fan base over the years, Mm -hmm. did you ever have to juggle the audience expectation against what you personally wanted to create in the show? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people, the the biggest gag in Batman Pyro Man, the first gag that you kind of come across is that it's not about superheroes at all. It's just like a way to trick you into looking at it. And then you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm watching, but I'll keep watching. Hopefully. Um, so people always kind of want another kind of superhero gag in it or something to do with superpowers. And I'm like, no, there, it can't. It, it's like the gag is that that's not what it's about. Like that's the biggest joke in it. So I have to kind of... Um, and Mondo has at times wanted us to put stuff in it, but I always say no. Um, but they're very good. They're good to us in that they, they've never stuck their hands in. They've never tried to change the content or anything like that. Um, but usually people will try to suggest things like that. And I'm like, that's a cool idea. I'm going to turn around now fully <laughs> and then not listen to that at all. Um, but I think one of the great things, our fans are so awesome. Um, it has such like a, the people who are fans, since it is sort of a niche uh, internet thing, I'd say we're Z-list internet celebrities, <laughs> um, which is, so the fans who do like it have been liking it for so long and are so sweet and kind and lovely and wonderful that um, they just kind of are along for the ride and, and are excited to see what's next because it always, I've been told it's always sort of surprising, which is a big compliment. So we don't usually have people kind of harping on us. We only have the sweetest fans, which is a blessing. Yeah, the fans are really great. The show seems to attract like a really nice caliber of people. Yeah, really gentle, lighthearted people, which is sort of the feel of the show. So it's it's always been a blessing to have such great fans. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, yeah just uh, being an outsider uh, looking in and just watching Batman Spider Man over the years as well. It just seems like, it just, it just seems like uh, all the fans, like, everyone's always just super, super sweet and lovely. <laughs> Great. Even yeah. even at like hubs of the internet where there are some shady characters, they always seem to be so sweet and nice when Batman Spider Man comes up and I feel like really accomplished for them. <laughs> like we've kind of cultivated that, that niceness, which is all I really want to put into our content is to make stuff that is, you know, nice for all ages and gives people, you know, Good, good feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a lovely aspiration to have. And I definitely feel like you're sort of fulfilling it as well. Oh, thank you. (laughs) We we try really hard. (laughs) We definitely need more love on the internet. This is true. Let's make it a a more loving place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This is the call out now to all of the animators. Let's make the internet a more loving place. (laughs) (laughs) I believe in you. I believe in all of you. We can do it together. (laughs) Together. You just see like this horde of just like I don't know, just kind of like the internet slowly starts glowing like this golden glow. I, I, I just out of all of the computers, it's like beaming out of people's computer monitors and phones. It's okay. just like oh. this is my design. <laughs> what could be happening? The animators, they're here. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's absolutely wonderful. But even just uh, just with that, it really seems like you reap what you sow. So if you want to create a feeling like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great shout out for all the DIY animators out there in that, you know, kind of, I guess, making the kind of shows that you want to see more of. Yeah. Definitely. And not being too afraid to, I guess, wear your heart on your sleeve as well. I feel like it's really like kind of how things are right now it's very bold to kind of be like that to be openly kind of tender I feel yeah it's really difficult to do that there's like a bravery in being um like yourself in that way and I would definitely say to anybody who's aspiring like when you make content don't make content that you think other people will want to see just make the content that you want to make what you want to say and people will come yeah people can tell if you're just making something to sell or just making something to get likes or clicks like people have a good, um, like a like a good honesty barometer. People can tell. Yeah, if I you're... feel that too. And definitely, um, that doesn't mean everybody has to make very sweet, tender things. It's just you know, like 
you, there can be sincerity if you want to make even vulgar, hilarious things too. But you know, just make what you want to make. Yeah, do it like come. make what's making you laugh or what's interesting to you, and stop worrying about what everyone else thinks. Yeah, because it's like everybody out there. We're like you know, in humanity, we're all sort of similar in so many ways that you know, if you have a a sincere thought, people will come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have any tips for people out there or even when you guys were just starting on how to not even maintain that honesty, but just sort of for people that sort of struggle with that bravery, you know, like you want to be brave and you want to be able to put yourself out there. But, you know, maybe you're just starting out or maybe Mm -hmm. it's just always been a scary thing to you. Do you have anything that you would like to say to them or like uh, tips on how you can potentially work through that fear to, to get to that honest place? Um, it's hard. I mean, a lot of art people in general struggle with like anxiety, be it like a social anxiety or, you know, any kind. Um, almost everybody I know who's such a wonderful artist suffers from some kind of anxiety. It's really hard and it can be debilitating, you know. So definitely only do what you're comfortable with. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to show your whole hand out there <laughs> of cards. <laughs> but um, know that there are people out there who are good (laughs) as much as it seems like not. And, you know, figure out what you're comfortable with. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, if you want to do animation, stay in touch with the reason you made that decision. Yeah. And what kind of animation do you want to make? Don't, don't take your dream project and put it on a pedestal and tell yourself you're not good enough for it. Um, I would say if you have a dream project, you need to you need to do like small experiments um, that are directly related to it. Like you need to do little tests and little designs. You need to just jump into it right now. Don't wait um, because it's not going to be what you think it is. Um, and it's not going to come out exactly how you think it's going to come out. And you need to be like adaptable. So don't don't hold those dream projects so close to your chest. Like actually work on them and make them because once you finish them, you are going to have to come up with a new dream project anyway. So. Yeah, and definitely something that I tell my students because I teach animation over at a uh, college nearby here as well um, is fake it till you make it, which I know people hear a lot and it's sort of hard to internalize, but it has helped me so much. Someone who's like, I'm fairly shy and I'm not great at self-promotion. I always, anytime I have to self-promote myself on the internet, I have to roll on the floor after in agony. <laughs> um, and it's really hard. That's the hardest thing to do is be self-promoting. Um, however you have to try. Um, and in that, just fake it till you make it. You gotta be, pretend you have all the confidence in the world. Never talk your work down when you're showing somebody or putting it somewhere. Just, you know, until, until you can find that confidence for realsies, you can kind of try to exude it from deep within. It's more, I guess it's more of advice or more, more of something that comes up with students. But on that note, like anytime you present your work, uh, absolutely never, ever complain about it or be like, oh, I wanted to do this, but, or I didn't get to this, but, or it's supposed to be, but. Like, yeah, never just talk never yourself, do that. Never talk yourself down. Just put your best face forward and stand by your work and know that, you know, just doing the work is brave enough in itself. So yeah, feel and, good about it. <laughs> and if there's something you didn't get done that you want to next time, that's for you to keep. You're not allowed to tell anyone that. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, <Alex. laughs> Eternal secret. No one will know. I, I've heard something like that, though. I uh, was watching Top Chef a while ago, and they even talk about it on there, like um, when the chefs are presenting one of their dishes, and they're like, oh, I didn't have enough time to add more pepper. Uh, the chef would always say, well, I didn't know that, and now I'm thinking about it in the context of, well, I what if it had more pepper, but it'd be better? So maybe leaving it out, just kind of like by not focusing on those flaws, you're able to just uh, focus on what it is in yeah. its entirety right there. It's about sort of presenting yourself. Like if you're if you're wanting people to look at you or your work, um, one of my professors kind of drilled this into me. And now with my students, I, I felt bad because I scared one of them by um they were like, oh, can I show you this? And I'm like, sure. And they're like, it's not very good. And I went, okay, never mind. And I turned around and they were like, what? 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 And like, yeah, that's what's going to happen, though. If you're, Why do you tell me, do you want to see something terrible? Of course I don't. Show me something good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you got you to have confidence in yourself. It's, it's like they need to believe in it if, uh, if they want you to believe in it, too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. and I want to believe in it. I want to believe in you guys. <laughs> I want to believe. Believe. <laughs> <laughs> Believe in the animation that believes in you. Oh my God, yes. you're in third. <laughs> Get together, you will spin on, and here's the animation heavens. Um. <laughs> I think like I didn't know what that was exactly. <laughs> 
but yeah, just to jump back to Batman Fighter Man, we heard through your Kickstarter for Batman Fighter Man that together you guys created five minute episodes every two weeks, which is insane and amazing. How how did how did you guys manage to do that? That just seems like it would be so much work for a two week period. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're um we divide up the work pretty well between the two of us, mm-hmm. and we're both. Um, it's tedious. We're both really fast <laughs> at the things that we are best at. But that was that was so that was Mondo's schedule, and um, most of their other stuff that they put up is about a minute long or two minutes long, which is still a lot for two weeks. But you know, it's a different kind of animation on most of their other shows. Like a lot of it is um like you know doll style animation, like breaks and things. Um, mm-hmm. but we were like okay because <laughs> we we're also very young. Um, <laughs> and now, of course, we can't, we can't do that because the episodes are even much longer. But we even created the Ghost Night seven minutes plus the, all the teasers, which equaled out to probably over a minute as well. So it's mm-hmm. close to like somewhere just under 10 minutes in about a month. Yeah. God. It was about that. What's wrong with that? We just, we had like, <laughs> we had we had deadlines. We had to do an episode every two weeks at that point, And we're like, they have to be as good yeah. as they can be. We well, can't we won't sacrifice, sacrifice quality. quality so. we're, we're both like perfectionists <laughs> in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> just like whatever it takes for this to be perfect. It will be perfect. Like that sort of thing. Basically. Yeah. God, those, I, a lot of that time was a blur. Cause it was like a full, like eight months of like putting out, we put out like god like almost an hour and like that time yeah it was i mean it was too much the schedule should have been more relaxed and you know we should have we should have paced it a little better so that we could actually like remember what we were doing during that time (laughs) which is pretty much just constant work wow yeah Um, i only remember that that. (laughs) yeah it was fun though though we had so much fun during that time because um batman Prime had just started getting really popular around them so we had a fandom suddenly and it was so fun to play with them. We were always doing like live streams and like mm-hmm. we were making tons of extra content for them on top of everything just because we were having so much fun doing yeah, it. Yeah, there's some comics and stuff. There's tons of comics. We were doing live streams every week that were on the Mondo page that were like an hour and they were live. Mm-hmm. Wow. And yeah, there's a ton of stuff. And we just used to goof on the fans a lot and they used to love that. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, it was. that's like I look back on that time even though it was crazy as really – I have a soft heart looking at it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like a big Batman Spider Man family. <laughs> Just like as like the episodes are being created and the comics. It felt That's- like that, honestly. Because you'd see the same faces and the same names all the time, even though it was getting you know, there were a lot of people watching it. I would see like the same people because Tumblr was still around back then too. And mm-hmm. it was before Tumblr was sort of what it is now, but it was like it was such a cute little community. They're all so sweet. <laughs> That's so wonderful. <laughs> Did you guys, like, especially when you first started out, well, not not even just when you first started out making those episodes, but how did you guys delegate who did what work? Was there, like, a lot of fine-tuning that went into that, or was it just like, well, here we go? <laughs> I think over time, we kind of just fine-tuned it, like, who is fast at what and what gets done faster in certain, mm-hmm. like, on each of us. Sort of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we'd like slowly transition to working together full time over the course of like five years. Yeah, we've been working together on projects since we were in college. Though, so we sort of yeah. have that under our belt. So we've done it in like little increments and then like figuring out, oh, you should just do this part. Oh, you should just do this part. Oh, I can do this. And then it's just kind of naturally evolved that way. Yeah. And now we work, you know, for four years now, we've been working a foot apart back to back every day. So we're, yeah. we're like, we get it down to a science. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's wonderful. That's really cool. <laughs> and we still love each other. We still have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Well, that's good. That's the most important thing. <laughs> True love. <laughs> oh my goodness. You mentioned that you started Batman Pider Man about seven years ago. So after all this time, what does Batman Pider Man mean to you both? Oh, Oh, my. That's not a hard question at all. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's sort of, at least right now, where we are in our life, it's sort of the best thing I feel we've made together. Like, yeah, it's the biggest project and it's spanned the most years. Yeah, and not only that, but I still really believe in it and I feel like it is really, I, I feel like it's pretty good. <laughs> It'll be easier to answer the question once uh, we finish the remaining Kickstarter episodes it's and when be, it's done. Yeah, it'll be like movie length by then, which is fascinating yeah. to think about but um wow. that'd be almost like two yeah wow. will, <laughs> weirdly enough but I feel like I don't know it's a really good culmination of both of our skill sets and like coming into our own as adults because it went from it started when we were children basically and now we're 
we're 30. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, But it sort of like spans a lot of our personal feelings, especially as a writer, it sort of imbues a lot of things that I feel are important, but subtly, which I'm trying to like subtly give kids vegetables or kids (laughs) or whoever watches it because it's an all ages show. I really, I really believe in all ages content that's not meant for adults or children that anybody can. Yeah, it's when there's content that is just for kids, that usually means it's talking down to kids or content that's just for adults is usually way too harsh and unrealistic. Mm. Yeah. And I feel, I feel like we're not all that different from each other. Like in non-gender content, non-age driven content, just content for humans. And that's sort of the stuff that Alex and I together have decided we we want to pursue in our career. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is the test run of that. And it's just been such a special thing to work on. And we've met so many great people through it. And I'm very attached to it now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, me too. It's just a very special part of our life. It's like a cool time capsule. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, that's just the loveliest answer ever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's wonderful. and Lindsay just the loveliest they really are oh my goodness they're just the best they really embody the spirit of making the internet a more loving place they do so Lauren and I wanted to ask you all dear listeners when has a small encouragement from someone else impacted your artistic journey we'd love to hear about it so come to oatleyacademy.com forward slash go forward slash diya1 that's as in the number one and tell us about it in the comments or if there's something else that really stuck out to you from the interview we'd love to hear about that too comment on anything else you've enjoyed in this episode yeah well we're talking about the power of encouragement why not spread the love this week you could post an encouraging comment on an artist's work that you like or cheer on a friend in their project yeah encouragement yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's spread the love. Next time, in part two of Alex and Lindsay's interview, we find out about their Batman Piderman Kickstarter. Their incredible opportunity of being in charge of their very own Adventure Time and Clarence episodes. And the importance of making things for yourself. So empowering. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite bits of the whole interview. It was really good. Right? It was amazing. It's another excellent episode. We can't wait to share it with you guys. As you may know, podcasts rely a lot on ratings and reviews. If you enjoyed what you heard today, dear listeners, would you consider going to iTunes and leaving a star rating and even a review? And while you're there, would you consider subscribing to the show? We have some pretty cool stuff in store and we'd love to share it with you guys. Mm. Yep, it's going to be super rad. I can't wait. All right, everybody, that wraps it up for this episode of DIY Animation Show. We'll see you next time. (laughs) Catch you on the flip-flop. Follow your heart. (laughs) And have fun animating. The DIY Animation Show is a production of the Oatly Academy of Visual Storytelling. We're your hosts, Jessica Dahl and Lauren Morse. Our producer is Chris Oatley. Our assistant producers are Anya Marcos and Ejua Ebeneba. Our mix engineer is Z. John Yan. Our theme music was provided by Asia Flux. Subscribe at DIYanimation.show. Find more art and story podcasts featuring insights from some of the most inspiring voices in animation, games, vis effects, comics, and children's books at friendsofdiya.com. We'll see you next time. There you go. That's cool. This is a really cool animation. Hmm. Oh, and it was a GIF. That was really good. It cycled. Uh, okay, I'm going to share it to you. Hello. Hey, guys. Hi. <gasps> what gift are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Creepers. <laughs>